Yeah. How's it going? Yeah, good man, good man. Uh, how's things in London, man? How's things going with you? <laughs> um, not too bad. It's been it's been quiet, and in the last week or two, I've just been going, uh, working harder. I say, like mashups and mixes and <clears throat> anything I can to stay busy, just because of all the lockdown and just crazy at the moment, isn't it? So. Yeah, I can imagine, man. I mean, what's it? I mean, obviously you're the king of mashups. What's it like being? The game mashups during during lockdown, man. Is it been? Would you say it's been hard for you? Because obviously, like clubs are open, and I can imagine that's quite a bit of your income. Like, um, you- it's all right. As in, it's not as crazy. I say, yeah, the club. I miss the clubs. I won't lie, but um, I just enjoy making mashups regardless. Like, if if clubs, of course, I want them to open again. But if clubs never opened again, I'd still make mashups, and I'd still be, I still enjoy it. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely, man. It seems like, like just from talking to you on D- talking to you on DMs and things, like it seems like yeah. you've got a really like positive attitude towards everything, man. And big up for the love, man. I've been follow- we've been following each other for time, and I think this is like way way overdue. Like, this is way overdue. I think it's been at least at least a year, maybe longer than that since we started following each other. And then, yeah, I know you've been doing your thing in Leeds with the show, and just with working with artists in general, man. So big up, man. Yeah, you two big ups, man. I mean, I really like what you do, man. And it's like, I mean, I'm just interested to know, like, obviously, because I've seen all the mad, crazy mashups and things like that. Like, how did you actually get into DJing? Have you been doing it recently? Or is it something you've been doing since you were younger? Or um, I've been doing it for a while. So uh, I've been doing it for nearly nine years. In, it's going to be nine years in at the end of October. Jeez. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But um, yeah, I started through my older brother and through uni. So I was always like the guy at house parties who would be like the guy to pick songs on YouTube. Be like, no, I'll play this song on YouTube. And then through that, I just thought, let me try and DJ one day, mainly through a friend at uni and my brother. And then I just got more comfortable, I guess. So my first gig was at uni, opening for Tiger, which was a bit crazy. Mad. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean, how would you go about? Because I'm just very interested to know, like, because you, you you do some ma- I think if this, you've got so much work, I can't even like list everything like on your SoundCloud and on YouTube that things that I found and like you've even got yeah. like a separate page as well, just to kind of have, like a backup page as well, which is really cool. Uh, I mean, you've yeah. got so many mashups. Like one of my favorite ones you did recently was I think it was B Young and Kelly Rowland. There was like a Fuji's and J Hus one that you released recently. Like there's so many. Yeah. Personal favourites of mine, I can't even list them all. I mean, just what's like your process? Like, obviously, like, how do you, how do you, in your head, like, how are you like, oh, this sounds good together? Like, how do you piece records together like that? Because like, I wouldn't even know where to start. Is it just like, would you say it's just, you've got a good ear or is it, is it just something, or do you just like play around with, with records, really? Um, I think over time, I developed, I guess, my ear for it. So if, if you were to play a song now, I don't think it would take me, as in, I believe in myself in a way. I don't think it'll take me long to think of something that will hopefully work. So mm. I think it's just the ear for it where I just think of something that might vibe or not vibe. But there's plenty of mashups I've made that aren't even out there because I don't like them or I just experimented or, yeah, a, a number of reasons. Mm. I mean, yeah. you can imagine, like, it's been quite... Is it quite hard to get them out there? Because I'm sure there's, like... I bet you have to find like loopholes of like copyright and things like that. Is there any is there any things that have like prevented you putting anything out? Like anyone stopped you or anything like that? Um, yeah, some copyright. So some mashups have have made it, but it's been after loads of copyright takedowns, and I've had to find ways to loopholes around it. And other ones that I've really wanted to put out, but that I've I've not even made it because I've just realised, all right, it's going to be copyright. There's no point. So someone like Drake, there's no, there's not really any point making one because yeah. if you if you use his vocals, you're just gonna get copyrighted. Like there's just no point at all. But yeah, man, like I just get inspired in that in a number of ways. So it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it looks it, man. I mean, like <laughs> when you do sets, like obviously before lockdown, like, it's, it's crazy thinking before lockdown. But I mean, before lockdown, did you when you did a set at a club, was it more just records you liked, or would you just throw in your mashups like after a couple of records, or was it more a DJ gen set where it was literally just all mashups. How do you go about doing sets then, like live? It's a bit of both. So I know some people say there's like the sandwich technique where you play like a known song and then you play your mashup or you play a, a less known song and then you play an unknown song after it. So 
two non songs and then a lesser than one in, in the middle. I do that with the mashups a lot just to see how people react to them and then see which ones work and which ones might not work, maybe. But yeah, man, I, I like to I like to do both definitely like oh, like non songs and then mashup songs, a bit of everything. Yeah, man, I really like what you do, man. I've got to gas you up, man, because like I've been a bit, a bit of fun for a while. Like I just literally have a literally like I just find myself going through your SoundCloud like on my phone, just chilling in like my flat and stuff, and just playing them or playing them through my speakers, man, or even playing them on my show, man, because they're just good to throw in. Like there was one that you did recently, I think it was Burner Boy. It was like Pop Your Collar or something. I can't remember the, the other beat that you used, but that was a really yeah. sick one. I even got a message from the head of Fresh. Like I played it on my show, and the head of Fresh FM was like. Yo, yo, Marky, what's this tune? Like, I need it. Like, so wow. yeah, it's getting a bit of love, man. Like, I mean, it's great to see that you're getting love, not just from, like, other artists and other DJs, but you're yeah. getting love from, like, I think I saw you're on Sign Anderson's show. Like, you've had love from, like, Tiger, KSI. Yeah. yeah, people, do you think it's starting to get noticed and, like, more recently, your work? Um, Gradually, gradually. I think I'm just finding ways to just market them, in a way, and just get them more attention i guess but yes yeah, definitely getting more more love this year i'd say and i'm looking forward to next year to see what happens with them as well because i've always got ideas just sitting there <laughs> and just some ideas ready to go and some ideas that are a bit left but yeah like yeah. the left idea was like dior the one i did dior with on deck um yeah because it's pop smoke i weren't really sure if i wanted to touch the song but i just did it and it's getting love, so that's good. That's good. Mm, I liked it, man, because, like, I mean, Pop Smoke was in with the UK producers anyway, so it kind of worked with Abracadabra's voice, and I liked what you did. I mean, yeah, man, it's a tricky one with Pop Smoke, but I'm sure that, like, it's, you know, it's showing love and showing respect to him as an artist and what he stood for. So, yeah, man, big ups for that. I mean, is, is there any personal favourites, like any ones that you think that really stand out from the rest or ones you aren't as happy with or anything like that? Um... The ones on say my Instagram, I'm happy with all of them. But um there are some I'm happy happy with, I'm not happy with. I'll say my favorite one is probably the one you mentioned, the pop your colour yay one. Because that's been getting love ever since I dropped it, which is tumble, which is good. And then other ones that I've made before that I don't really like now. I'm just actually on my Instagram now, just trying to think of one. Uh one second, one second. I mixed, I mixed me, me hente with Brock Off Your Back. Mm. And when I, when I made it, I thought it was good and I'm not sure if it is now. But yeah, probably that one. Probably that one that... I, I like all my mashups, but that's probably one that I wouldn't push compared to other ones, i say. Yeah. Mm. That's good that you, like, you can at least be critical of yourself because I'm sure like, there's other DJs that just love everything they do. But I'm glad, and it's good that you're taking a step back and you're being like, this worked, maybe this didn't work kind of things. And I really like it, man. And uh, yeah, it seems like it's Absolutely, getting more yeah. love online, which is really good to see. Um, yeah. I mean, was it KSI that followed you then recently? I think he gave you a follow or something. He didn't follow, but um, he liked some of the mashups that I did with his songs. So I did one to Loose with him and Simba. And then a couple of months ago, I did one with Houdini. Mm. And they both got love. And I don't he was close to sharing it on his story, which would have been crazy, but... <clears throat> yeah, he just liked it, and then, yeah, from, from from him liking it, some other people were DMing, just saying, "Yo, the case, I like your mashup," and then, or like your like your post rather, because they might not know what a mashup is. But yeah, I got some DMs from it, and it was it was, it was pretty sick, man. It's pretty good. Yeah, man, you deserve it. Me, I mean, like I've seen you've been, you've been consistent as well. Like you've been putting in work. I mean, do you feel like? Because I've seen other mashup people pop up, but like I'm not. I'm just gonna say it on a real one, bro. Like I yeah. don't think anyone compares to what you do. Do you feel like you've set a trend then within <laughs> mashups? Like, um, in the most humble way, I think I have in a way. But it's not a thing where I made up the term mashup or anything. But um, when I dropped my, I dropped a video in 2016, and then I saw a lot of other DJs doing the same thing. And it's not a thing where I have a problem with it. It's just cool. People can do what they want to do, man. But um, yeah, so I think it's a healthy trend that people are getting creative in in different ways than just maybe blending something that's predictable, maybe. But getting creative in like new ways, fresh ways. I think that's that's definitely sick. I think so. Mm. Yeah, man. 
Good man. I mean, how how do you know, like, in your head, like, when you go to make a mashup? Like, I know yeah. you said you've got quite a good ear, but how do you know that something's going to work? For example, I think you've mixed, was it Tion Lane with Cranium or something? I think I'd seen that one. And they're like, a, that's like a mad mix. I mean, how do you know if something's going to sound good then? Do you plan it out or do you just kind of play around with the audio and the instrumental maybe and the vocals? Or um, I play around sometimes, but the main thing is, I guess, I imagine of myself playing it in a set, I guess. So the fight for your right one with um, Fuji's, I, I've, I think of that as a warm-up mashup and what vibe it brings to warm-up. And then the Dior on deck one, I think of that as a main set vibe that will get people going mad if I play that. Um, then the yay, the pop your collar, yay one, I think that's more in the middle of the night. So I try and base it on a club set, I guess. And if if I heard it out, would it sound good? Or if I discovered it online, would I find it good? Stuff like that, I think. Yeah, sick, man. I mean, it's interesting that you you see it as like a club set. I didn't really think about it. Like, I just kind of saw it as like, oh, it's, it comes up on the order that it comes up on SoundCloud. But now you said that, people can kind of see that you're thinking from the perspective of like a club DJ, which is really cool. Um, mm. Maybe I mean, it's both. Maybe it's both because now we're in lockdown. It can't be clubs, but like, yeah. Just something that I like, I guess. Then I'll post it on my IG or SoundCloud. Stick my guy. I mean, just <laughs> keep doing your thing, man. I just want to ask you, like, final question. Like, what's your plan for, like, next year? Then do you have anything planned or... You're just going to keep releasing mashups. Like, what's your kind of aim goal with this then? Um, I'm definitely going to keep making them. I think an end goal for sure is to probably get into production. And I didn't think I would at first. But, yeah, I, I think because of my ear is getting... I think my ear is improving for music. I think I could maybe do decent. But I know it's not going to happen in, like, a week. It's going to take time. But definitely production, I'd say, would be a big step. Um, guest sets on like the bigger stations maybe events if we could but yeah those three things i say yeah man. i mean covid's really messed up the bag hasn't it this year <laughs> like, it's, it's put like so fumbled the bag man <laughs> it's fumbled the bag man like it's messed up us djs obviously it's not it's not a good time right now but we'll pull through as long as we stay creative we just keep ourselves busy with mixes like i like, I like what you're doing with the interviews and your show stuff like that. If you can stay busy and creative, then lockdown, it won't even feel like lockdown in a way. If you're just busy and creating and just, yeah, creating, i say that's the best word for it. Yeah, yeah thanks for the love, man. I'm glad, you, I'm, glad you like, I'm glad you like it as well, man. Like, it's, mm. yeah, man, I've just, like, with me, like, I've just tried to keep myself busy, like, obviously, like, doing Zoom interviews like this, doing, you know, playlists, trying to just keep, I mean, I feel like I've thrived, like, literally, like, I had a friend of mine recently that approached me about doing my rebrand recently, which you might have seen. And yeah, like before, I feel Mark, like I was Marky doing a Max. Yeah, that's it. Originally, I was I was just known as Marky before, and then we, you know what? He he approached me a couple of weeks ago. Well, start of this yeah. year, in fact, and he was just like, you know what, Mark? Like, we need to rebrand everything. Like, you know, you've got yeah. a bit of a name for yourself now. There's a few people that follow you, but you're not, you know, like you really need to take this up a level. And yeah, I feel like I thrived. Like, you, you look at like people like Swarms, Tory yeah. Lanez. I know he's a bit controversial at the moment, but like, <laughs> I feel like lockdown for me. I feel like a lot of people have missed this opportunity, but for me, I was like, rah, like, this is such a good opportunity. I'm going to be inside loads. I'm going to be on my laptop anywhere doing like, yeah. uni- so I just need to kind of capitalize on this moment. I feel like as a creative, as a presenter, I feel like I've thrived even more than I wouldn't, you know, if I, if this wasn't lockdown, I don't mm-hmm. think I'd be doing as much interviews or as much stuff would have got done, to be honest. So it's interesting you say that. It's the best time. Cause yeah, like we're always, some of us might be busy in, in your case, if you have uni or gigs or whichever. We always, not make excuses, but we're always busy doing something. But now there's, there's no clubs, which is it's good and it's bad, isn't it? So no work, obviously, but then more time to just think of content, think of ideas, be creative, um, stay on top of your music. Like, there's so many ways. There's so many ways. Definitely, man. Definitely. Um, but yeah, man, I just want to big you, for, big you up for coming on, man. It's been a pleasure, man. I'm sure we can do like a catch-up one at some point. Uh, just yeah. wonder if people can, if they want to get your mashups and get get at you, where can they do that, bro? Yeah, cheers. But so um, I upload them on SoundCloud. So if you search DJ Dens UK, Instagram, type in DJ Dens, um, YouTube Denzel Saffo. So actually, uh, let me let me re-say that. Actually, everything is pretty much Denzel Saffo or Denzel Saffo One. So that's on SoundCloud, Instagram, YouTube, 
Facebook, even Twitter. Um, yeah, everything Denzel Saffo. My guy, get out, get at him because he's the king of mashups, man. Get out this guy, yeah. But man, big up for coming on, man. Big up for coming on. I'm sure that we can sort like a, a guest mix out at some point and you know get get a little bit of a set going. But um, yeah, yeah, man, we'd love to. Man. Would love to, bro. Would love to, man. It would be a good, good vibe, man. Good vibe. Obviously, yeah. thanks for having me as well. Say again, sorry, bro. Thanks for having me. Big up yourself as well, man. Oh yeah, no problem, man. It's been an absolute pleasure, man. And uh, I'll let you get off and get you know do your studio session and everything. But have a good night, man. Thank you. That's all right, man. Have a good night, man. Cheers, man. Right, take care, man. You too. All right, bye.